Hey guys, it is so good to have you with us today. Welcome to our latest edition of our new China special series. If you are just now joining us, we have three teams on three separate buses crisscrossing China. I am Jonathan Betts. My partner on this road trip, Xu Xinqin, is going to join us in a few minutes. Today, I am with the Xinyang Acrobatic Troupe here, and we are in the rehearsal hall. This is a very famous group. You have probably seen their acts because they have performed all over the world. They've won many international prizes, and they have been around for a long time, since 1951. So let's bring in my new friends here. We have the deputy director of this troupe, Zhuang Li, and also Piao Yi, our translator. She works with us. I need the help. So <laughs> thank you so much for having us today. First off, tell us about this group and what makes Your troop here so special. Can you please briefly introduce this Shenyang Acrobatic Troop? And what are its characteristics? First, we are very happy to welcome everyone to the Shenyang Acrobatic Troop to enjoy our daily training and practice. Welcome to the Shenyang Acrobatic Troop. 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 Welcome to the 然后这个节目有两个人组成，然后他们会利用那个绸吊来展示空中的美。For this part is our aerial silk axe, where there are two people and hanging on the top of the air. Oh my gosh, that's incredible! It's actually stunning to see it so close here behind the scenes. How difficult is that? 他们会利用互相的默写来做一些空中的技巧。It require the motor coordination between the two people. And they will show some acts in the air, and a lot of strength, because they're hanging from the silk with their, with one hand. You say this is very necessary strength. And doing an aerial dance. They say because they are always holding this, and then they have to dance in the air. Is it? Yes. Daily training is made up of strength, resilience, and strength. Then they show this part, the tail, to demonstrate their strength. They use their hands to support each other, not only to support themselves. For the daily training, we have three parts. The first one is strength, and second one is the flexibility, and uh, the third one is uh, the coordination. And for this act, it requires the strength between the two people. Because they balance off each other, correct? They both yes. have to be almost equally strong in some cases, right? Because they're leaning on each other, they're they're dropping each other, they. <laughs> <laughs> lowering each other, they're carrying each other. That is incredible. How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of practice does it take to really master this kind of skill? How many years of Uh, they have the ability to perform on the stage, so like ten years in total. Ten years before they're show ready. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's a whole lot it's of investment, very hard, a lot of time. Very hard work. Wow, very hard work. Oh. That is incredible. Thank you so much, guys. Let's keep it moving because we have not a lot of time. We have a lot to see. There's a lot that they do here because it's a combination of martial arts, gymnastics, and, <laughs> and as we're seeing next. Balancing skills. So, what are we looking at here? We have the second part. The second part is like a rush mat. We call it a bar. We call it a bar. Then it is through two special strong bars. We call it a bar. Then it is through two special strong bars. We call it a bar. Then it is through two special strong bars. We call it a bar. Then it is through two special strong bars. We call it a bar. So, this act requires two powerful men. Standing on the ground, and they put the bar on their shoulders, and the oh one on the top. And they have a chill. They have chill. Then we, 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 Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that was cool. I've actually never seen it with children involved. How old is she? Come, Xia Xia. Ah, how old? Ah, how old? 
She's nine years old. She's nine years old. Wow, incredible! You did a fantastic job. Wow, come on, 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 come so in the beginning, we have to use some uh, safety measures to keep the, the actors safe. So you can see some uh, ropes hanging mm. on yes. the top of the buildings. So those are the, uh, for the safety of the actors. Yes. For the harnesses during the show, but uh, they don't wear those during the show. What we're seeing on stage is what we're seeing right now. Even though this is rehearsal space, this is the real deal. This is the actual show. 他说，就是咱们排练的时候会有这些保险声，那实际表演的时候是他，因为我们通过日常训练，让他这个动作达到百分之百的准确率，我们才会撤掉这个保险声，来确保演员的安全。They will make like 100% sure that it is safe for the actors. They will remove all the safety ropes. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> no way. Is it dangerous? Do you ever have accidents? Any serious accidents? 会不会出现什么意外？会会，因为我们日常就是用的更多的是我们的身体，比如说我们在汽车的时候可能崴到脚。可能是我们在做日常训练的时候会扭到筋，这都是会发生的。Yeah, there there some dangerous times. Maybe they will fall down and、uh, wreck their ankles, or sometimes it happens. Wow, it's incredible. Which makes it. Like the athletes. Completely, it is incredibly difficult and incredibly amazing to watch. Alright, let's see what else they have. 又让他们给你展示一个我们学员的日常的训练和技巧。They will show the daily routine of the training here. Daily routine of the training, okay. This is our daily training. Now we are in the one to two grade. They have from the first grade to the second grade. How many are they? Our children are from six to nine years old. For most of them, are from six years old to nine years old. So they are very young. And do they do a lot of them grow up to become performers with the troupe when they are adults? Do they graduate into this when they get older? 他们毕业了以后会成为这个正式的演员吗？大部分人都会吗？还是嗯，基本上全都会成为那个我们的正式的演员。Most of them will become the real actor. Really? How difficult is it to to get into this? I mean, for kids who want to audition and try out and become a member of this troupe, what is the audition process like? 他入选都还都需要有什么样的条件呢？对些小学员来说，首先是年龄，我们最小要收到六岁以上的有自理能力的孩子，然后他们本身的条件要经过我们一层一些那个专业性的考试。啊、uh, ，for at least they have to, they need to be six years old or above,、mm -hmm. and、uh, they have some、uh, requirements. They have to pass some exams, some tests, and then they can enter the troop for as a trainee. The flexibility is amazing. <laughs> and how many years do they spend training here, these kids? They have to train for how long? They have to Seven years in the troop. So like the basic training of acrobatics and also some like the math and the Chinese or some other classes. And do they come from all over the country? Are these kids brought in from all over China, or are most of them local? They are from all over China, or are they from all over China? They are from all over China. 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 Really? Yeah, so, so all across, really, all northern across China. All across China, northern China,、mm. and they they can see the online recruitments as, and they come here. How many hours a day? Well done, well done, kids. Wow. 好，现在是九一到二年级的那个翻腾类的跟斗展示。Oh, they are showing, they are showing the tumbling acts. It's a lot of gymnastics. Whoa. All right. 然后他们会这个难度会一点点增加。
通过年纪不一样、岁数不一样，它这个难度会越来越增加。When they are getting older, the classes, the difficulty of the classes are getting harder and harder. They get harder and harder. So how on the, how difficult is this here in the scheme of things? Is this for this troop? This is easy stuff. This is beginner stuff. 这是比较简单的一些训练吗？对，这是我们是一到二年级的训练。This is the simplest part. Every kid in the troop can can act like that. Wow. 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 Uh, getting better and be perfect. Well, can we talk with some of them? Let's chat with some of the kids. Well done, hip hop. Very good, very good, very good. Like interviewing you. Who wants to talk with us? Who should we talk to? Liu Fan, say, or is that? That Liu Fan, come on. How about this one right here? This one. Liu Fan. So, so tell me. Why you like this? What do you enjoy about this? Uh, why do you like this? Why do you enjoy 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 Oh, she saw some performance from the older trainees, some brothers and sisters, and they can touring around the whole country, and she want to be like them. Really? What What do you like most about this? What is your favorite your favorite performance? Your favorite stunt to do? You 最喜欢表演哪一部分？哪个是你最擅长、最喜欢演的？翻跟头啊 ，like the tumbling, the somersault. The somersault. That's hard. How many How many hours a day do you practice? Do you practice all day? 啊，你练习这个翻跟头多久了呀？每天都练习多长时间？每天练习两个多小时。Two hours per day for practicing the somersault. Wow. Well, you're incredible. Great job. Can you show me some of your moves, some of your stretches? 哎，可以试一下，比如说伸个呃，伸个筋啊，然后劈个叉之类的。来个竖叉横叉来。Yeah. 一、二、三、四、五。Well, I can't do that. 四。横叉，来个倒立，空顶，空顶不会哈。来个腰，来个腰，来个趴腰。来，宝贝儿，来个趴腰。我这边是观众，对，转过来的。哎，对。I can't do that either. I was going to try to maybe do one of these things, but I can't do any of these. 好，起来吧。他说这实在太难了，这个看上去。好，我们再给你展示一个。Very impressive. Wow. And how old are you? 他多多大了？小朋友今年？九周岁。Nine years old. Nine years old. 九岁。And her dream is what? 嗯，咱们理想是什么？梦想是长大后想成为什么？成为一名杂技演员，像哥哥姐姐出国巡演。Uh, she wants to be a uh, successful acrobat and uh, touring around across the country and abroad. Wow, well, you are all well on your way. Well done. High five. Good job. <laughs> Kiss you. Thank you. All right, so what else do we have to see here? What else can she show us? This is the fourth part. We want to show the program called Kong Zhu. English is called Yo Yo. This is a Chinese Yo Yo performance. Yo yo performance. I've seen these and I have always wondered how this works because they're not yo yos that I grew up with. 他说他一直就在电视上看到过这个走空竹，然后他就很很好奇这到底是怎么怎么练成的。嗯，这个空竹吧，其实它我们是从嗯小孩开始训练的，因为它这个有一有一点那个娱乐性在里边。Well, they will start to practice the Chinese Yu Yu from a very early age. It's like an entertainment show. A lot of uh, children can play the Yu Yu in China. Really? So kids grow up with this just for fun, right? This is something they do for fun. 是，然后只是到我们杂技团以后吧，把这个这个这个道具我们给它那个技巧化了，然后然后难度增加了。Well. Uh, for performance in the troupe, they add the difficulties, and make it harder, and make it more um, like enjoyable for the audiences. Like the second yo-yo yeah. there, as yeah. she's doing now. So what I cannot understand when I watch this is how it doesn't get all tangled up. <laughs> I, uh, it's, 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 it's like juggling, but you have the, the string. So how does the string not get tangled up, and how do they keep it... 他说：“为什么他,他很好奇，为什么他能一直转，他不会打结呢？啊，他因为他那个空子的中间有一段轴承，有一段轴承，然后他这个稍稍过来点，他那个怕影响，他那打到你们。他有段轴承，他利用这个绳子不同的抽动它，就像我们小时候打那个罗铁一样啊。”
there's some space in the middle of the Chinese yu yu, and they use a special technique and the strings to make it uh, a rolling without turning up. I, I mean, I just, I don't even, I may not notice because we're off to the side. They're throwing the yo yo's at each <laughs> other. And I'm over here gasping and catching my breath because I'm afraid they're going to hit somebody. <laughs> but they're going to, all right, let's try it. Sure, let's give it a shot. They're going to let me play along here. Oh, Okay. Uh, I give you the one. Which one? Uh, then get her See, I told you already. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell they're going to get so frustrated with me because this is, should be so easy. Oh, so she kept it spinning. Okay, so here. That is part of the trick is this has to keep spinning. Like this one, 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 Okay, I need everybody to get out of the way because I'm. Oh, see, see, this is what this is what I was afraid would happen. How do they keep this from happening? I'm so amazed by one. this. So we, <laughs> for those at home watching, I'm now on my third yo-yo. So <laughs> within like 30 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna try to throw it. This is not gonna be good. I'm actually nervous, believe it or not. Oh, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> it worked. Is that good? Was that good? Hey, hey, I you can't believe, I, can't believe I caught it. Good job. I want to you tell you it. something. I practiced earlier and not even close to catching it. I can't believe I caught it. I'm so but now proud of myself. Hard to... But I messed it up because I got it all, I got tangled. Okay. All right, well, now I'm on my way. So now I'm feeling kind of... Eager. Oh, we're gonna do another one. All right. Um, thank you. So now we're on my fourth yo-yo, folks. Fourth yo-yo. All right. What else should I do? What can? I, what else do you want me to do? Oh, there's no way. Just turn. There is no way. Can do that. You can turn your body and. Uh, do it one more time. Oh gosh. So again, folks. This looks easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's, I'm learning. It's a special skill just to keep it balanced and to keep the strings from um, getting tangled up. And as I'm learning, the disc have to keep moving. So you, it takes this skill of constantly moving, this little finesse, keeping it balanced. And she told me earlier that I'm supposed to keep the tip of the baton, which I'm not doing, the tip of the baton, the same level, <laughs> the same level as the center of the yo-yo. Okay, I do want to try one more time. One more time. So. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, you did it. No, I didn't. <laughs> did I do it? No, I didn't. Did I do it? Did I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I? Yeah. Don't lie to me. It, I, it's not good. <laughs> okay. Oh, see, we have another one ready to go. So what am I doing wrong? How do you how do you get it spinning like that? Uh, uh, she will give you one set of the Chinese yu yu practice. She has time to practice. We're heading to our final stop. All right, let's go. This. And again, I just had to remind everybody this is stuff children do all the time. So. <laughs> Thank you. thank you, thank you. Okay, so our final act here, our final stop on our grand tour, the Xinyang Acrobatic Troupe. Where are we? What's going on? What are we looking at here? This is the, the trick cycling. This program oh. well, uh, Before, one person riding the bicycle, now we change it to the third, third people riding the same. So um, that's a question for you. Do you feel the, the, the pressure to 
outdo the last act, make it better, more sensational. How much pressure do you feel to try to up the game? Because杂技是越来越难,越来越有难度,要有新意 uh, I face a lot of pressure when designing these programs because uh, more and more people are getting familiar with the acrobatics. So they need to add more tricks, add the difficulties, so like attract the audiences. Like what we're seeing now, now they have jumped on top of each other. They're standing on their shoulders. Now it's a little bit more complicated. We have to go to the front of the front. So we can't Oh, this is not a, a done program. They are getting, uh, they are, they are getting more training. So after that, they, they can do more acts on the bicycle, like the, the tumbling or the somersault Whoa. on the bicycle. So this is so this is not even ready for showtime yet. Yeah. You are still rehearsing and practicing and trying to smooth out all the kinks. How long and how difficult is it to take a take an act from inception, from idea to rehearsal to practicing to showtime? How long is that process? That depends on the difficulty of the program. Normally, it takes one to three years for practicing one single program. One single program, mm -hmm. one to three years. Yes. So which is your most popular program in your show? What is it that the audience loves most? Um, Some daredevil performances. Audiences all love that. Because they want to see the danger. <laughs> <laughs> so they will put the most dangerous act at the end of the show. Oh, the, for the grand finale then. And what is the most dangerous act you have? Uh, uh, for the most dangerous act, it's like the tumbling in the air without any safety. Safety Oh, they have the stacked chairs performances, like the, the 10 meters high of the chairs. And they are going to do the summer work on the top of the chairs, on the top of the stacked chairs. Because that is the act, I think, that you guys, um, one of the most famous acts you have. We've all seen the chairs stacked up and the guy who climbs on the top and balances. It's incredible stuff. This has been an incredible show. I've got to say, this has been such a special treat for me. I'm on stage now. I want to go and join the group. Ladies, this is incredible. Gentlemen, thank you so much. The Xinyang Acrobatic Troupe, a very special behind the scenes look. Look at this, we're right on stage with them. As they practice their skills, you can see their shows all over China, all over the world. That does it for us here in the Northeast. Let's send it now to our friends in the Southwestern part of China. I don't know if they're at a place as cool as this, but we'll see. It's Sean Caleb's in Taoyuan, so take it away, guys. Welcome, guys. We've been traveling all day <laughs> on mountain roads, and finally we are here in a village called you want to Gao Dong Xuan, <laughs> which means High Cave Village. Yes, yes. Sean wanted to get his um, Chinese village names correct. So we're at Gao Dong Village, or High Cave Village, in Wuxi County in Chongqing Province. Now, this is one of the most impoverished counties in Chongqing and certainly in China as well. We're in this village, we're going to uh, go about to see how local farmers go about their daily life. You can see cornfields right now, the weather isn't very friendly. Yeah, so. it, the thing is, we're, we're kind of high up in the mountains, and mm. this is a good example of what people really have to struggle with. This is an old problem as we focus on new China, poverty, and also trying to eke out a living mm. uh, 
in this mountainside which is basically vertical but if you can see they've, they've been able to do some terracing and they yeah. have a uh, corn on both sides of this very narrow path that we're going down but mixed in with the corn they also have all oh. kinds of other uh, <laughs> vegetables that they're growing uh, here as well they have soybeans i uh, saw pumpkins earlier and also yams um, uh, sweet potatoes yes and chestnuts chestnuts we were told and local honey Lo and uh peach trees but that are not mature yet so At we're not going to see uh, any peach if i can get you to hold this umbrella yeah, sure. tell you on i'd like to show you this is uh the corn's coming in this is an indication that it's that it is ready to be picked the tassel the turns tassel. black and you can just pull it off and then you do it very well sean well i grew up in west virginia this is what we do <laughs> <laughs> so the corn uh, nice ear of corn right there and we'll give it uh, to our good friend we're going to chat with in just a minute who's going to explain uh, how they really do uh, garden here. If you look, it just goes straight up the hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, this is insane. It's not a 90-degree angle, but it is a pretty pretty steep pretty angle. Steep, yeah, and, and you talked about terracing, and that's the whole thing with um, the situation, that's the poverty situation right here. It's because it's tucked away, really, in China's uh, remote mountains. Now, this area of China is known... Well, we were in Chongqing last night, a modern uh, urban sprawl, but it's also called China's Mountain City. Right. So we're really um, getting a taste of mountains right here. The um, ground is really hard to walk on, especially with the rain. So I think our camera crew is yeah, doing a great job with this. Go slow, guys, and if you need yes. to turn around, just we'll sacrifice the shot. But we're going to walk down, and we still have another, I'd say, 50 meters or so before we're going to turn the corner. Mm. But if you look, you can see how foggy it is. It's, uh, it's misty, but this is a sheer drop off. This isn't just like a small hill. Once we get down there, you're going to be amazed. It's more than, I think they said, a thousand meters straight down. So it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty steep. And as I understand it, too, the local villagers actually carved out all these paths on this side of the mountain, on that side of the mountain. Uh, it took some time. There were 73 villagers who were able to do this and um, put it all together. See, here's another. To me, this is fascinating. It's not just, just corn. Gonna... They'll grow something different virtually everywhere. So anything they can to get enough crops, get enough mm. food to feed the village. Mm. And that's... Any patch of land that they can use, right? Indeed, mm. indeed. And we'll get some more corn as we walk down, get our We're good friend when we catch up with him. We're also seeing some melon right there. Yep. That one? See, I think that's a, that's a, a uh, juvenile pumpkin, a very young pumpkin. Oh, that's a pumpkin. I think. Hmm. Well, who knows? You we'll find out right. soon enough. But yeah. you get the point. And then yeah. uh, soybeans are up in here as well. Uh, we'll come across those shortly. And uh, sweet potatoes, as we mentioned. Mm. And uh, to, to talk about the poverty in this area, you know, we, we were in Chongqing, a city of 33 million people, and obviously you need a decent amount of money to live there. But here, just a few hundred yuan a week is going to be the difference between being impoverished and mm. not being. And there's another good example and of this. Quite group. frankly, the, the poverty line is um, quite low. Right, right. It's less than $1 a day. And see, to me, this is fascinating. There's just two corn stalks. That's it. But they still find, you know, this is this is the way to do it. Mm. If there's not a lot, but and you mentioned just now, Sean, seventy something people in this village who could do farming. Seventy-three yes. uh, people were uh, actually the ones that were able to do all of this. Mm. And I think um, that just speaks to the whole issue of um, China's migrant workers. You know, a lot of the villages are like this one that we're seeing right now. It's empty at its core. So the able-bodied adults would go into the cities mm. to find money and work. Right, right. Um, and the elderly and the children are left behind in these villages. And that's villages. what we saw at the top of the hill. I wonder if we could get our producer to go up and get the village or, and kind of...
Hello guys, sorry about the loss of signal. We are in this uh, mountainous uh, village, so the signal isn't doing too great right now. But uh, just to recap, we're in Gaodong village. Gaodong Swin. In Gaodong Swin. Which just means? Swin means village. So we're in Gaodong Swin in um, Wuxi County. Very rural area. In and southwest China. A dramatic change from where we were yesterday in Chongqing, a city of 33 mm. million people, 4,500 bridges that spanning the various rivers mm. that feed it to the Yangtze. So here, this is a good microcosm of the way and the difficulty it is mm. to try and raise uh, the millions of mm. people still living below the poverty line in China. China, more than any other nation I've ever been to, is really a city of two worlds. I mean, a nation of two worlds. Of course, yes. You have Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing, uh, all those areas of cutting edge technology, really mm. leading the world in AI. And then you have this, mm. you know, and this is just a, a wake up call mm. uh, for how. Uh, difficult it is to pull everybody out of poverty. It really is the goal of President Xi's government to do this by 2020. And as you mentioned earlier, Taiyuan, the poverty line is certainly much lower. The bar is set mm, a lot lower the than bar other is set nations, low. exactly. Which is important in areas like this, where you could put in uh, any kind of uh, crops. I, th I was told these are soybeans earlier, uh, and they're also thorny. Look at that. I think it's these. I don't know what this one is. Mm. Just walk very carefully. Yeah, we're trying to get, we have a villager with us. We'd like to get him to, to join us. Mm. Oh, and there's another, um, if you look over there, there's some solar panels. And China is leading the world in renewable energy, mm. especially not just establishing the solar panels, but also construction thereof. And they're also amazingly successful at lithium batteries for electric vehicles. And that, again, is to help this growing middle class have a better quality mm. of life moving forward. But, Sean, I just want to go back to what you just said, but what you just said before, because I think you brought up a very good point. Because when most people talk about China, it's all about, you know, how it's um, become the world's second uh, biggest economy within a short span of time, mm. the economic miracle. This is what people, this is not what people think about when they talk about China, is it? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, exactly. Two storylines going on in China. One is the fast growth, uh -huh. and another one is the people that's left behind from the growth. Okay, see, so yeah, I think our uh, local villager is coming up to, to meet us, Mr. Joe. I'll let you introduce uh, him to our audience, but uh, he is one of the people, and you talked also about the number of young men who leave these leave villages the, to go into right. the larger cities to work in factories, uh, manufacturing. Mr. Joe, so yeah. hey, huh? Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, can you introduce yourself for us? Okay, so his name is Zhou Zhongxin, and he's already 73 years old. Nice. Can, can you tell us about some of the crops that they grow here, besides the corn, what kind of fruit trees are these, and do we see uh, some other soybeans and, mm. and yams, sweet mm. potatoes in the distance? Ah, this is uh, the Sichuan peppercorn. Ah. So that's that ah. mouth numbing. <laughs> we met that little devil. Yeah, we met it. Ah, this is plums. Uh, plums, plums, uh, plums. Uh, plums. This is beans. Beans, soybeans. Uh, soybeans. Beans. Uh -huh. This is a type of herbal medicine. Uh, 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 this is a type of herbal medicine. Uh, for what? This is a The name is Qianghu, but I don't... This corn to him. Mm. Um, can, I, uh, can we walk down to just the edge there? Because I want people to see the cliff as it drops mm. off. So if we can get Mr. Joe to... Ask him what the most diff if you would please ask him what the most difficult aspect of trying to farm here is. Okay. We can keep going. Okay. He said it's, an, it's not that tough once you're used to it. Now, you make any song horses, I only. Song horses? 
啊，生活不黑，生活为啥子？啊，生活很好。啊 ，He said he says he thinks he has a good life. Well, he is a, a spry seventy-three years old.、Mm. Can we maybe just walk forward、yeah. just a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Come, we'll continue. Go. 那你每天的日常生活是啥样子 ？I'm just trying to ask Mr. Joe to explain what his daily life is like.、Ah, good. 嗯，每天生活是啥样的？每天生活不黑，每天生活都是吃，呃，一天一顿肉。Oh, they have meat for one meal、oh. at each day. Wow. 嗯，那几点钟起床？嗯，我一般都是五点多钟，五点钟起床。It gets up at five in the morning, and then what do you do? 然后呢？然后我就是，呃，为个人喂牛猪。啊啊啊！有鸡子。啊。就是搞这些。And then he feeds the pigs and chicken. So he gets up at five, and then he feeds the chicken and the pigs. So he has pork, chicken, and fish、uh, throughout the week. It's not just one kind of meat. 啊、um, ，那你每个星期都是就你说每餐都有肉嘛？是都是每每一天每一天一顿肉啊，都是自己养的那些。自己养的啊 ，Yeah， it's all from the、um, oh. livestock that he、mm. raises himself. 嗯，周大爷，你们村头现在就是在这儿的人有好多？在这儿的人呢、啊，在这儿的人有，那些是鲁北大侄儿。嗯嗯嗯，鲁北在这儿，是鲁北好多，我都搞不清楚。Oh, 那都是年轻人吗、嗯？是老年人？有些年轻的有老年人。啊、uh, ，老年人多点儿嘛。老年人又多些。啊、uh, ，so he says there are a lot of、uh, elderly people in the village, so、right. which speaks to what we just talked about before. Young. Now, what about the solar panels? What are they used for? 嗯，给我们介绍一下这个太阳能的板子。这个光伏发电站。嗯。是。这个工商联给我们办的哦，啊、哦，工商联给我们办的，光伏发电。Government installed this for them。啊，这个好不好用？那好，它的它这个它是电，它是跟那个电一样。啊啊啊 ！So they use this instead of electricity.、Oh. Interesting. How long has this、um, farm been operating here in the cave in the sky village? 嗯，这儿的这儿的历史你晓不晓得？就你们的祖先是好久过来的？祖先好久过来的，这、uh, 个我们不清楚。Uh, he says he doesn't know. Oh wow. 嗯嗯，但是从你生下来的时候，这儿就是这样子。哦。啊 ，But he says、uh, it's been like this since he was born. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Does does he feel that there really is an effort to lift people out of the poverty level in China,、uh, or or does he even feel that he's living in a difficult? 呃，周大爷，你们这儿是一个贫困村嘛？不贫困村。哦，那你觉得就你自己感不感觉得到这种扶贫带来的效果呢？扶贫带来的效果，扶贫对我们这里确实很好。嗯。不管是呃哪一行，上面的这个这个扶贫，对这个扶贫的困难户、贫困户，确实还是不平。啊、嗯。我们嗯，就支持啊，从各个方面呐、啊，帮我们。这个安排有些资金上啊，从各个方面都都得到支持，得到好感。Uh, so he says the poverty alleviation drive is really doing something for the to improve the lives、And、of the local villages. We have to、villages. look down this mountain real, real quickly. If we can get the camera to aim down there,、mm. that is just awe-inspiring. I mean, that's the kind of view you just don't get tired、mm. of. And I think clouds is really、oh. one of the. <laughs> We have some farm implements working their way in. <laughs> A hoe and a sickle. What are we going to do now? So, 大爷，给我们展示点啥子？现在？展示点啥子？啊，我们把挖红薯。啊 ，So he's going to dig out some sweet potatoes. Oh, great, great. Let's take a look. 好，那你弄嘛。啊 ，He's got a colleague here with him. 谢谢，大爷。哦，来。And this gentleman with him has been smiling from ear to ear since we got here. I love the hat that he's wearing. Yeah. Made of a towel, I think. Are they able to save the sweet potatoes throughout the year, or do they have to pretty much eat them as they pick them? So, 大爷，你们那个红薯是是挖了存到起吗？还是挖了就吃？挖到为主。Oh, they feed the pigs with this. 哎，挖到存也存起。啊，就说存起的，就说冬天的的，冬天的都为主。啊，夏季些的的都为主。Okay. Sometimes they they save it for the winter to feed the pigs. Got it. 每天要
，给好多了。每天要给多煮多，就给一撮鸡；多少就少给点，就是反正一煮多少。Uh, I asked how much do they have to collect each day, and he says uh, it depends on how many pigs you have. <laughs> so, how many do you have? You, 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 so he's cleared the vegetation off the top. Uh, and now there's a battle to see who will be the one. <laughs> who's going to do the digging? Wow. Oh, there we go. That's amazing. You know, it's to me... Uh, Taiwan, I think it speaks to the resiliency of the people here in, in China. Mm. To you or I, this would be an incredibly rugged existence. Of Getting course. up at 5 a.m., it, it's, it's backbreaking work. These are not young men. And, you know, the smiles on the faces, the mm. way that they're just going through this is uh, it's very impressive. Right. So um, I think elderly folks in China's villages, they actually just toil in the lands until the day that they cannot move. Right. And we talked about the issue of uh, left behind elderly. Right. And I think the suicide rate oh. for elderly people in China's villages is much higher than the national That's average. Awful. It's just depressing. Mm. And I wonder if they're a little disappointed with the size of these because they've been looking and sounding a little frustrated. But here we're getting a, some a little larger in. <laughs> Oh, so he says these are quite small. Hey, why are they so small? This is what? Because it's in the middle. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's got a couple of nice ones. Uh, he says it's because there are trees which uh, block, block the, the sun for yeah, this right. little patch of land. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, so other places there are big, bigger sweet potatoes. And he's right next to peppercorns too, <laughs> if you look. So it's to me, it's amazing how creative one must be mm. to work in this rugged landscape and again we had a shot down that mountain that shows just how steep this is mm. and these farmers here in uh, Guang, wait, Guadong Xuan, mm. uh, are so uh, focused on doing what they need to do to take care of all the people right. that live here. Right. Uh, I'm curious even during holidays like the, the, for the uh, Mid-Autumn Festival. Did other people come back to this village? Did they celebrate it all, or have they just been toiling? So all of their children are in the city, right? and they didn't come back for the Mid-Autumn Festival. Oh. So... I've been to a lot of these villages, mm -hmm. and um, they usually come home once every year at best because the whole point of the, them going out is to earn money. So, uh, 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 yeah, he says his kids are um, outside working as well. Mm. And Sean, I just, I think we're journalists and we're taught at school to not pass on judgments on certain issues but I just feel so strongly about um, the issue of the left behind elderly and left behind children because it, it's a rather controversial issue um, outside and inside of China but I just think it's a it's a it's a trade-off between economic necessities and um, Okay, well, and being I... able to stay with your family. What amazing. You know, it's the kind of. They're going to they're gonna pick some corns for dinner for us. Oh, tonight. they're way too nice. They should take care of themselves. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Is this peppercorn? This is peppercorn. peppercorn. You see it right here. Yeah, and there's a. Down here, then we, we're almost out of time, but I want to show you this one. What I think is a pumpkin. I'm very curious if we can find out. <laughs> you what really, this, you really wanted to find really, out about I really that. I really want to pumpkin. find out about this. What this um, is? Can you ask the gentleman? Yeah, it's a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin. Wow. 
It's amazing. So this is early in the season for pumpkins. Yes. It's, it's a cold weather. Yes. It's so, yeah, uh, it looks like a melon right now. So. Yeah. Uh, 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 he said both uh, human and pigs can eat this. That's good. <laughs> okay. Well, you want to toss it back to our colleagues? We've had a very fascinating time walking through this amazing farm carved mm -hmm. on the side of a mountain. And we're going to go live again for the four, uh, 1600 television show where we have a wonderful platform overlooking the gorgeous mountains so, and clouds. And I also village. have to say, this is our last new media shot for my dear friend, mm. Tao Yuan. She is going to be moving on. I'm going to be joined by uh, Jiao Yunfei uh, later on. Yes. So, guys, tossing back to you. Thank you, Shang and Tao Yuan, and welcome back in Northeast Shu. Shenyang Acrobatic Troop. So I can see there are so many awards and trophies. Just tell us a little bit more about I mean how did you guys achieve this? So 这个永誉之士，嗯哼，哎哎，嗯哼，所以说他走遍了五大洲，嗯，走了七十多个国家。So uh, let me, I will Mr. An just told me that uh, this troop has a, a history of sixty-eight years. That's almost seventy. That's almost the same age as the the Republic, uh, the People's Republic of China, and this troop has been to across the five continents on this planet Earth. Over 70 different countries. Uh, 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 so right here that we have this souvenir and director and he just told me that actually it's from Indonesia and back then China hasn't established this diplomatic tie with Indonesia but then because the two countries are growing closer and the troop was sent there to perform and then you know of course uh, the Indonesian uh, government gifted this 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 souvenir it looks like a lion, right? Is it a lion or a lion? It's like a lion. It's a lion. It's a lion. It's a So it's like a painted mask from the in Indonesian culture. So topic, talking about diplomatic ties and how your troop has been helping to bridge this kind of cultural difference and tie knots between different countries, it's been happening since the beginning, right? But since we talked about our Zaji团, actually, this thing to help to help to help to help is not only one thing, right? Yes. It's more than a country, a cultural symbol. Yes. That's what we talked about. We also have other countries, because of our... Yes, many countries. We didn't have a cultural symbol. The Seiyang Zaji团, the Seiyang Zaji团, as an international leader, it represents China. 先去进行文化交流，打开这扇门。呃，有哪些国家？比如说，就是我们，比如这个，嗯，呃，这个是毛泽东主席，嗯，这个。
送给沈阳杂技团全体演员，嗯，七十六个人，嗯，每人一斤十斤巧克力，嗯，这是毛主席自己拿自己的稿费和是工资买的，嗯、送给杂技团。那这个是当时是我们去哪个国家是在？这个是一九七二年沈阳杂技团访问。美国啊，哎，当时是九零年才建交。对对对。Oh, actually, I'm going to briefly translate that. So, Director Anning just told me that、uh, this troupe has been sent to to perform across the world to kind of bridge、uh, different cultures and to bring awareness of Chinese culture into a different country. And this thing happened in 1972. And Chairman Mao, these are the chocolates gifted by Chairman Mao after the troupe was sent to. Uh, to the U.S. to perform in front of President Nixon, actually American President Nixon, and and they did this like in 19, 1972, and it's even before China officially established dipl diplomatic tie with the with the U.S. But how do you see this? Like, how much can like your your troop somewhat bridge these connections? 就是讲到其实杂技作为一个外交的手段啊，就你怎么看这件事？是一个积极向上的还是？就是怎么来理解这件事情？这个杂技，这个当时我们是访问美国去乒乓外交之后，嗯，第一个中国啊文化的代表团访问美国，嗯，访问了白宫，尼克松总统，时任美国总统，尼克松接见了全体七十六个演员。嗯，我先翻译，简单简单翻译一下。So I was asking Director Anning just how how he thinks the importance of like being this messenger of like Chinese diplomacy with other countries as a you know acrobatic troop, and he just told me uh, like everything happened like with Nixon and when they visited the, the states in 1972, it happened after the ping pong. What do we call it? Ping pong diplomacy, like. Uh, a ping pong player from China was sent to play with the U.S. players, and it helped a lot to bridge those two different、uh, countries. I mean, from a softer, with a softer means to do that, you know, kind of bridging the the culture elements first. And the troop from Shenyang, the Shenyang Acrobatic Troop, were performed, were graded by President Nixon, and and toured around the the White House, and of course, and and performance, and I mean, and perform on stage. 呃、uh, ，back then， 呃、uh, ，但是我们当然去到美国哪些城市了嘛？就除了白宫以外，这个杂技啊和体育一样，它是无国界的、嗯。对，哎，这个当时尼克松总统给白宫说：“你们的到来，嗯，沈阳杂技团的到来，为两国人民架起了友谊的桥梁， oh, and, 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 打破了这层这个坚冰， yeah. Yeah. 说美国人民欢迎你们。” And, and and the director Annie just told me that when they met with、uh, President Nixon, and Nixon said like, I mean the American people welcome the troop here, and they are kind of break, breaking ice between the two countries with these kind of cultural elements and and build this bridge based on cultural exchange. 当时我们去哪些城市啊？当时我们去了华盛顿，嗯，哎，纽约、费城、嗯、芝加哥，这美国的大城市。嗯嗯 Yeah. And back then, they toured around、uh, in New York, Philadelphia, and of course Washington D.C.、Um, and Chicago, the bigger cities. So, but we have a lot more things happening here. So, a lot of these trophies, awards. So, tell us a little bit about this. 就其他的我们奖项可能就因为就是这奖项一些由来怎样的呢？嗯，沈阳杂技团有刚才说了六十八年的历史，曾经获得过四十多项。国际和国内的大奖和金奖，嗯，哎，这个就是我们的荣誉石这些东西。这是最近最近的一个一三年啊，这获得奖。嗯、uh, 嗯。So actually, director Annie just told me that、uh, throughout the past six decades, almost seven decades of history of the the troop, I mean the the troop has won like over forty different trophies, different awards from both home and abroad. And these, I believe, is from、uh, Monaco, and they have a lot of things happening here. But then I also want to point out one thing. So the Shenyang Acrobatic Troupe has been touring around, still touring around today. So they have this series called Sky Mirage, and they are entering the fourth season this year. To be honest, and they've traveled, as I have mentioned, all all across different continents here on this planet, and they visit different countries, 
South Africa, America, Asia, of course. So it's a really good thing, right? I mean, to have the thing happening here in Shanghai, Northeast China, and kind of bring bring like people closer with the with the cultural products, right? So I think now our colleagues in in southeast of China they have a little more to share with us. So Lindy and Yang Chongxi, take it away. Hi there, Xincheng. Now we're on the road of the picturesque city of Hangzhou. Now today we're going to talk about some culture symbol of the city. Now what do we have here on、uh, on our list? I think the first、uh, off the chart is、uh, West Lake. Yeah.、Absolutely. And we we just did a fantastic live broadcast、yeah. on the West Lake、uh, two、that、hours ago, right? That, that was, was a lovely experience. It was so tempting to just ignore the bus for a moment and perhaps let it go on without、oh, me.、Yes. I could have spent a lot more time. And、there. we saw rows of boats on uh, uh, by、yeah. by the. By the bun, and、uh, you were recommended to take one of those、oh, boat rides. Absolutely,、right? yeah. I've been told that that's the way to experience it—a cup of tea and a、yeah. boat ride on West Lake. Yeah, I heard. I heard it's lovely. I would. I would love to try if、yeah. we have some more time today.、Uh, and then, second on our list is the、uh, Longjing Tea. I mean,、mm-hmm. Zhejiang has a very strong tea culture, and in in、uh, in Hangzhou,、uh, there's a famous.、Uh, Branch of tea called the Xi Hu Longjing, the West Lake Longjing tea is very famous. It's、uh, supposed to be one of those teas that、uh, Chinese people serve、uh, dignitaries and、uh, very special guests. So that's、yeah. how important、uh, this tea is.、Uh, it's a kind of green tea, but in the southern Guangdong province, where I come from, people all people usually drink Longjing tea,、uh, oolong tea. So,、oh, right. but I, I well, mean, Longjing is、nice. pretty good. Yeah. I mean, green tea, Chinese green tea, of course, is well known all over the world. This、yes. is the first time tasting this particular type of green tea for me. I found it quite strong, but I like that about it. I actually quite like the intensity of the flavor. Well, yeah. I mean, if you if you drink it after after a meal, you you, you get this refreshing、yeah. feeling, right? Yeah. And、uh, the people of Hangzhou are are very heavy like tea drinkers, and I think the founder of Alibaba, Jack Ma, is set to ha- set to exclusively drink. Drink tea, right? He doesn't drink coffee. So <laughs> when Alibaba reached a strategic partnership with Starbucks some time ago, he,、uh, Jack Ma, I remember he was quoted saying that I I don't drink coffee, but I like Starbucks. But like, how do you <laughs> like Starbucks, like Starbucks and not drink coffee, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's interesting.、Um, and also we have、uh, Hangzhou Silk. Uh, which is very soft and colorful,、mm-hmm. and can be made into、uh, scarves and clothing. And there's this、uh, handicraft where you where you、uh, do embroidery on on,、right. on the on the on the silk products. But a lot of these、uh, ha- handmade products are, I don't know, losing popularity because because of a, a lot of these Western fast fashion clothing and a lack of young talents flowing. To,、uh, to create the hand, actual work, handcraft、yeah. industry, because it takes years and years and years to practice and get good at the, the embroidery and the technique. Wow. Well, I mean, I think there's just、uh, that I haven't seen yet, but I know, of course, there's a lot to see、uh, here in Hangzhou. Let's find out more. Let's bring in our guests now. All、I、right. think it might be a good idea to bring them into this conversation. Of course, we're on the bus with Andy Mock, a senior fellow at the Center for China and Globalization, and we're also with Tim Clancy, who is the、uh, Hangzhou Culture and Tourism Promotion Ambassador.、Mm-hmm. Tim, I want to start with you. When it comes to culture、um, and and sort of the the cultural tourism of this particular place,、mm-hmm. tell us about your role as promotion ambassador and how it sort of brings people here or what it's really meant to serve. Well, about my role, I act as a bridge. A conduit to promote the good things about Hangzhou to the rest of the world, and hopefully、uh, let other people around the world know about the wonderful things Hangzhou has to offer. Actually, Hangzhou has three World Heritage UNESCO listed sites,、wow. being the West Lake, the Grand Canal, and the recently listed is the Liangzhu Archaeological、um, Site up、sure. in the Yuhang District. Now. You were talking about many things in Hangzhou. I heard you just before, and all these things I, I know a little bit about. <laughs> sure, you do. And、uh, one of the things you mentioned was、um, the the silk and,、uh, and various handicrafts losing、yeah. losing the talent or、yes. losing the people talented craftsmen that know how to make these silks or carvings or anything. In the last few years, various museums and community activities have been set up 
around Hangzhou, especially there's one by the Grand Canal, a museum where you can take your children on the weekend and they can experience wow. all these handicrafts and you know, skilled craftsmen will teach your children and show them how to do this to, to spark an interest oh, to preserve these, this intangible cultural heritage for future generations. Well, Andy, let me bring you in on that note. I mean, um, China has a lot of cultural history to celebrate, but you know, as we're suggesting, uh, cities actually have to be very proactive if they want to maintain that cultural history. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think Hangzhou, when I think of cultural distinctiveness, the cultural distinctiveness of Hangzhou, two phrases come to mind. The first is La Dolce Vite, and the second is La Vie Bohème. So the first means, of course, the sweet life, yeah. and the second means the bohemian life. So I talked about one of the uh, poets from uh, Hangzhou before. There's another one, uh, Su Dong Bo, Po, right? Very, very famous poet, but also he was an epicure. So today we would call him a foodie. <laughs> so one of the things I think is a very distinctive part of uh, Hangzhou is this love of life. Of uh, there's a very strong literary tradition, especially of poetry, but also enjoying all that life has to offer: food, drink, having a good time. And in fact, uh, Dong uh, Dong Po wrote. A uh, kind of yes, special dish yes. is named after this poet, which just I think shows us just how important enjoying life is to the people of Hangzhou, and I think that is probably one of the most attractive cultural attributes yeah. of Hangzhou. Oh yeah, I love the pork meat. Have you tried the pork meat? No, I haven't. It's, I haven't. It's a actually. way of cooking pork. It's sort of, sort of sweet and uh -huh. uh, gives off this reddish look. It's very appetizing. It's um the story behind it because he. Yet the poet it was actually an official in this area and he was responsible for doing some works on the West Lake for irrig irrigation and water control. And um, he, gave, he brought the workmen helping him on some works, some meat, uh -huh. some soy sauce and some yellow wine and uh -huh. said here, he thought they would cook the meat in soy, in the, and eat it with the soy sauce and drink the yellow wine, right. but apparently they all they put it together it. And, and started cooking. And that's, where and that's where it apparently came from. There's a few other stories. Wow, yeah, the Southeastern cuisine do use yellow wine a lot. Yes. Well, staying on the topic of foods and drink, uh, Andy, uh, Eastern China has a very strong tea culture, right? In past years, we always talk about, talk a lot about uh, the coffee industry, the Starbucks popularity, and, and this Luckin coffee, all of yeah. the coffee expansion, but what we, used to, what we ignore is just how big the tea industry already is in China, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Well, I think tea is much more than just a beverage for Chinese. I mean, it plays a central role, I think, in Chinese culture. So we think about how the experience of preparing and consuming tea, and in fact, some traditionalists even consider it a kind of spiritual meditation because by taking your time properly, putting out the instruments, uh, heating the water, letting it steep the proper amount of time, that cultivates a kind of calmness and tranquility that is very, very important. And I think uh, you know, one of the most important concepts in Chinese culture is the idea of balance and harmony. And tea culture light -like calligraphy, I think, is seen as one of these traditional uh, traditional forms of culture, but also a form of personal cultivation as well. But one thing I want to mention too about uh, uh, Su Dongbo and uh, Bai Juyi is in the West we have this idea of uh, Plato talked about in this book, The Republic, what makes the perfect ruler? And he had this idea of a philosopher king. Yes. And there weren't many of these in Western history, so Marcus Aurelius is considered one of them. But in China, we've had several, and in fact, two of them were here in Hangzhou. So these were the poets, uh, Bai Juyi uh, Bai and uh, Su Dong Po. I always get that Po and Po. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but these Su Dong Po. Yeah. Um, but, um, but both very, very well known. In fact, probably two of the most famous poets in all of Chinese history, but also very successful government officials as well. And this, I think, resonates very, very powerfully with many young people today. And again, we talked earlier about why do so many people want to come to Hangzhou. It's not just the economic opportunities, but it's also the chance to be inspired by the culture, the history, as well as the physical beauty oh, of the man. place. 
It makes me just want to get my feet on the ground and find out what's really happening in the city, on the culture scene, on the creative scene. Well, while we're on the bus, our roving reporter is on the ground in Hangzhou. Let's cross now to Xu Mengqi and find out what she's getting up to. Hey guys! Well, you know that in different parts of China there are different culture, and in the southeast, the Yangtze River Delta has a unique culture of its own,、um, which is often described as elegant and exquisite. You know, because if you ask a Chinese what Jiangnan, well, the Yangtze River Delta is、um, well in Chinese we、we'll、call this region Jiangnan, which literally means the、uh, south of the Yangtze River. And if you ask a Chinese what Jiangnan is,、um, you know they'll probably have this dreamy and poetic image in their head that a young Chinese lady, you know, a beautiful Chinese lady holding a beautiful umbrella, standing on a bridge、um, against the backdrop of a waterside village, you know, with、uh, gray tiles and white walls. It's typical Jiangnan scenery, and. Believe it or not, what really adds to that romantic image is the Chinese umbrella, the traditional Chinese umbrella, which is made of、um, bamboo and paper. I mean, this is an item that actually appears a lot in、uh, Chinese literary works. And here in the city of Hangzhou, we are in you know a, a live demo area. For traditional crafts in the region, and in this part, in this section in particular, they are showcasing the making of this kind of traditional umbrellas.、Um, and you can see right there. I think, uh, 师傅您怎么称呼？呃、oh, ，我姓于，叫于万伦。Okay, so so、um, the craftsman here is called、uh, Yu Wanlun, and Mr. Yu is obviously, you know. Placing some maple leaves onto this. This is what? We this is paper. Onto the okay, the cover of the umbrella. Oh, right there, you can see it's、uh, the skeleton of the umbrella、uh, over there. Can you pan to the left a little bit? And this is a like a workspace for them to make this kind of umbrella. I mean. Obviously, looks really, really different from our modern umbrellas, which have you know metal ribs, right? Like、uh, stainless steel ribs.、Um, and let's you know, I mean, this for Chinese are beautiful. I don't know for our foreign audience what you think,、um, but I I guess we could just show you how the umbrella is made, you know, like briefly. 嗯，师傅，你要不简单给我们展示一下，就是这个油纸伞，油纸伞是怎么制作的？怎么制作的？这个是是，这个是一般是有多少道工序 ？Like how many procedures are there in the making of the umbrella？ 对，九十六道工序，一般是。Ninety six。现在做的是其中的一道，啊，弧伞面，这一个内中的其中的一小道。Well, I guess with ninety six procedures, it's I don't know whether it can be like mass produced. 这像这样的话，有这么多道工序是可以这种，就是大规模生产、量化生产吗？我们得全完全靠人工来。Okay, so as I guess, it's still like、uh, mainly relying on on. Let's go to the other side on human labor. So it's all made manually. 您现在是是在糊伞面？呃，伞面中的其中一道工序就是先把纸撕好。嗯哼 ，So what he's doing now is like, you know, uh, drench the paper. 这是什么样的纸 ？Like, it's I guess it's not like your typical paper. 是一种很特殊的纸吧，应该是。我们这个纸叫做皮纸。嗯哼 ，In Chinese it's called 皮纸 ，which can be literally translated. Oh, 皮 means leather, but in this case it means the tree bark. You know. So this paper is made from tree bark, uh huh, which I guess makes it durable, uh huh. 撕好纸以后就开始往上贴了。I mean, this is much more exciting than our modern umbrella, right? But、um, I guess because it cannot be mass produced,、uh, does it create difficulty for you know for would this die out? You know, uh, 像这种工艺就是因为不能机械化生产，觉得现在就是。
，会有那么多人用吗？会会不会存在一个这个，就是？现在用的人不是太多， mm -hmm. 可能更多还是一个作为一个公益。All right, so, um, Mr. Yu says here that actually there aren't that many people who uses this kind of umbrella now, but it's more uh, used as an artifact, which makes sense because I don't think it it it's that cheap. You know, it won't be as cheap as our、uh, regular umbrella. 像这样一把伞是多少钱？这个我们价格也是根据工艺的复杂程度，嗯 ，OK， 有,有贵的有便宜的，像我现在做的这个嘛，可能就呃四五百。嗯哼，要不我们快示快速展示一下 ，Cause I want to show you guys more, so let's just know, um, show you a very basic process here of how this umbrella is made. I don't know whether this looks beautiful to you. Let me know because I do think it's beautiful, and it's actually, as I said, it appears in a lot of Chinese literary works, um, you know. It, Umbrella, like oil paper umbrella for Chinese, imply beauty. Okay. Let's just see. Uh huh. That that's the paper made from tree bark, and it, there's like, you can see there are multiple layers. Layers, excuse me, because there, right there is the maple leaf we just saw. See. Ah. 对，我们就是固定住它，是吧？对，在贴的时候有有几点要注意的。上面是粘了胶，是吗？哎，对，粘了胶。So there's glue on it. 嗯哼。然后这里我们每一次中间会有一个凹进去的部分，而且是很均匀的凹进去。它其实。You can see the conclaves. 对。呃，那这个之后是什么样的工序？就像像从这个到这个还得多久？哦，中间差了几天。From this to this. 呃，差了五天。Would take a few more days' work, like five days. OK， 会会简单介绍一下是什么样子呢？就是呃，我们像这个伞做好以后啊，做好以后，明天就要开始收伞，就是先这个伞它现在是然后是不是要上油？对，上油是后面的。OK， 我们这把伞接下来就是像，呃，我们这个伞收下来以后，它是一个完整的竹筒，这样的。Uh-huh. When so when umbrella is closed, you can see it's like this. 对，刚做好的时候它是收不成这样的，所以说我们还需要慢慢的顺。Okay. So it take much more time. They'll trim it, and they'll then also, you know, like oil, put oil on the paper, so it will become water、uh, rainproof. Well, we we can now then go to the next point to show you more. Then, thank you, Mr. Yu. Well, I really want to show you more, so we gotta hurry up. You know, this is the city of Hangzhou, and this space here is um, it's a factory turned live demo area. Factory turned live demo area. This space here is um, it's a factory turned. Live demo area for for local traditional crafts, many of which are, you know, designated as the nation's intangible cultural heritage. You could see all of these here, and you could also experience some of the crafts hands-on. You know, and that's what I really want to do for now. Because check this out, guys. It's, um, I guess it's a really different dyeing technique than, you know, our modern.、Uh, Clothing, I guess,、uh, and it looks really, really Chinese. So, anyhow, 打扰一下。嗯，咱们这边是展示那个是什么样的一个呃植物印染机。So, I was asking what kind of、uh, you know craft they're demonstrating here, and it says it's dyeing from natural plants. So, dyes made from natural plants. 这种都是什么 ？Like 对，这种都是手工。And it's the it's the the pigment is indigo, right? It's And these are all made from natural plants. We can try. Because okay. Then I will teach you some like this one. Then this is the most simple one. Okay. 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 先看一下那个染的过程，然后看的是从怎么从怎么从这个到那个的。可以啊，可以、啊。嗯，那我们就到后面去。Now we're checking the backstage of how these fabrics, you know, these patterns are made from natural plants. Uh, the dyes are from natural plants. Right. Check this out. These are the indigo um pigments. 这些就是那个染料。靛蓝是吧？是靛蓝。这个是
怎么做成的？呃，它就是我们的兰草，兰草的叶子和茎去做发酵，发酵之后，然后做成我们的蓝电泥。兰草的 kind of 蓝电泥之后再二次，我们再这样呃进行一个染缸的一个发酵， uh-huh. 然后就可以做成我们的染液了。OK， 嗯、um, ，像像你们染那个。嗯怎么做成那个图案呢？我靠，就 make that pattern。通过一些绳子啊、皮筋啊这些去通过扎，嗯哼，就可以了。OK， 嗯、um, ，Well， 我们还有五分钟的时间，还够体验吗？嗯、可以。Uh, okay, so five minutes is enough to show you the process. So let's go. This is a traditional Chinese handicraft. So this is also a traditional Chinese handicraft. You are just using the handicraft part, right? Yes, it's the The dyeing, the technique of dyeing. 因为在我们没有化学染料之前，都是通过植物来进行我们植物的染色嘛。Yeah, because before we had, uh, you know, chemical dyes,、uh, we all the dyes all came from natural plants. 然后给你演示一下这个管怎么做。Mm-hmm. 它需要用到这样的绳子，然后我们把它。And this is 这个是就是这个怎么做成的是吧？对对对， okay. 这个图案的做法。So this he's going to show us how this pattern is made. 就是把线包在里面，然后给它卷起来。There was the thread you could see. Uh-huh, and then you roll it. 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 可以，要不给相机看一下。So let's show it to our audience. 现在收紧，收紧。呃，您刚那个过程可以再展示一下。再打开是吧？嗯哼。So right. 对，就这样。嗯哼。然后我们两头拿起来，然后抽紧。You pull the the left and the right side together. 对，然后就会出现这样的一些小褶皱。啊 ，and then you see the pleats, right? The pleats here. They are critical in making the patterns. 就这个绑紧就好了。Okay, and then you tie them together. 对。啊，这就是先做成一个这样的一个，对，反正扎成一个形状，所以没呀。OK， so you tie it together to a certain shape. I guess I don't have time to do that. Um, let me try. <laughs> OK. OK. 从从这儿是吗？都可以，你也可以试试对角的。OK, let me try it from a diagonal. I'm gonna roll it. 要紧一点是吧？ Make it tight. OK. 嗯、uh, ，行，我如果就想让这个图案停到这儿呢 ，like、嗯、this is where I want the pattern to stop and then I stop rolling， 对，然后就可以抽起来了，然后把它，对，抽起来，两头绳子这样抽起来，那 OK， you pull the string， 对，这样提在这边，然后对，往里面拉 ，OK， and that's my pleats there， 像这样是吗？那我染哪里呢？染这儿？你也可以只染这，也可以整块染。怎么打结 ？How do I make the knot？ 就是正常的，先打一个，先先先绑紧， uh, okay. 然后再打一个活结就好了。OK， OK， OK。I, I'm making the knot here. Uh huh. 对，这样就可以了。绑紧一点，尽量绑紧。Okay. I need to make it really tight. 对。我们大概还有两分钟的时间。可以吗 ？Okay. Now let's go dye it. Uh, we need to. 先放在清水里让它泡湿。Okay. To to drench it first. 哦，我们可以只染这一部分嘛，这、mm-hmm. 样时间快一些。Mm-hmm. 先把这边用清水打湿。Right, make it wet. 打湿这样，它这个染料不会沾手吗 ？Like, will this dye stay on your hand? 可以可以洗得掉，没有关系的。Okay, okay. He says you can. 然后你 you can wash it off later. 拿着拿着这一块。If the dye stays on your hand. 对，然后我们只要浸泡这边就好了。我们浸泡一分钟。一分钟 ，OK， 我们跟 leave it there for one minute. 手抓上去一点。OK。对，然后再往下伸一点点，对，手可以不用碰到。嗯哼。对。OK。对。It's actually turning greenish and and yellow. 这有点蓝黄的这种。对，偏偏绿，偏绿的感觉。嗯，黄绿黄。它的染液其实是黄绿的。You can see, yeah, the color there. 有点蓝，对 ，kind of yellow and green. 然后待会染完，你可以发现，就是染色完的时候，它其实是绿色的。Uh-huh. 然后它跟空气接触氧化完以后才会变成蓝色。Okay, so when I take it out, it will be green at first, and then, uh, when 
the pigments meet the oxygen in the air, it will turn blue. Okay. Okay. Now it's 30 seconds already. Okay. We can also take a look at the effect. Okay. 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 If we use a paper, we will repeat it several times. Then we will take it out. Okay. 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 Okay, now I'm gonna take the string off. This string is not too tight. No, no, there's one that is burning. Let's take another one. Okay. Then open it. Alright. Alright, alright. It's unfolding. Uh huh, okay, you take the string off. Ah. Check that out, <laughs> guys. Check that out. Not bad, right? Well, I guess with more time, it will be more beautiful. But that's really a simple process. You're, you know, you could try that yourself, right? Thank you so much, Xu Mangqi. Of course, experiencing that very intangible culture we were talking about earlier, experiences that will keep these traditions and cultures alive. Well, that's all from us on the Southeast bus. Back to you, Xu Shenchen and Jonathan. In 70 years, China has undergone unprecedented transformation. From its old industrial base in the Northeast, to its new manufacturing powerhouse in the Southeast, and to its emerging Southwest, CGTN offers you a panoramic view of contemporary China. Our crews will travel along three different routes and come to you live from dozens of locations and free mobile studios. Join us for an all-inclusive look at China on our TV channel and digital platforms, September the 9th to the 20th. It is new China, then and now, in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China, only on CGTN. In 70 years, China has undergone unprecedented transformation. From its old industrial base in the Northeast, to its new manufacturing powerhouse in the Southeast, and to its emerging Southwest, CGTN offers you a panoramic view of contemporary China. Our crews will travel along three different routes and come to you live from dozens of locations and free mobile studios. Join us for an all-inclusive look at China on our TV channel and digital platforms, September the 9th to the 20th. It is new China, then and now, in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China, only on CGTN. Hey guys, thanks so much. So I'm back now. I've changed back into yeah, my suit yeah. from my rehearsal, from my acrobatic stunt, learning how the Xinjiang acrobatic troupe operates. And how was it? It was actually so much fun and really? it is so much harder than it looks. 
I mean, it looks hard. I mean, even, even the basic <laughs> things like okay. the yo-yo, which yeah, 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 maybe yeah, yeah. you played with as a child, the Chinese mm -hmm. yo-yo. I could not even do that. You get the reason, the balance, and everything, it's, right? It's so much harder than I thought it'd be, but it was really stunning seeing them work because it's quite an operation here. And, but while you were having fun there, I learned some history about really? this place. Okay. And they have some old photos here. And we can see definitely a lot of the, uh, the national leaders from China have visited this troop. But one thing I want to point out is right there. It's in, like by late 1972 and in 1973, actually mm -hmm. this troop was sent to the U.S. So this is kind of the history-making moment for the Shinyo yes. Acrobatic Troop because Absolutely. they were the first official cultural performance from China to come yes. to the United States. Visit as we see here, Richard mm -hmm. Nixon in the White House. This was before China and the United States had diplomatic ties. Yes. So long, deep, deep history here. This troop was founded in 1951, Why, just yeah. two years after the founding of the People's Republic of China. So let's turn over to our guest sure, and talk yeah. about the history and the significance of this group. We have with us, as always, Professor Benjamin Chow with the Paris School of Business and Professor Tong Zhong Ma Tong Zimo, yeah. with um, our com current affairs commentator. Thank you guys for being here yeah. today. Appreciate sure. it. Yeah. And, and Mr. Tell, actually you grew up in Cheyenne and you've actually visited this place when you like back multiple in the times, day, right? yeah, yeah. How was it? Well, once again, this is also the symbol of change, the kind mm -hmm. of um, great transformation that I that we experience on our way. I mean, to this very great troop. Uh, this is actually the um, sort of the most uh, kind of a cultural icon among our generation uh, in the 1970s and good part of the 1980s as the kind of a performing arts uh, sort of um, uh, epitome of this very mm -hmm. uh, great city. So uh, as far as I recall, I mean, uh, they were actually the heroes, the defying, the defies gravity, I mean, basically. <laughs> All these great, daring, dazzling sort of performance on top of the bicycles that we just see in yeah. their dressing rehearsal, yeah. uh, uh, which proved to be a major source of entertainment during the socialist China at the very time before the market the marketization and also commercialization. But still still now, I mean, they are um, kind of performing, as far as I know, they have been performing in over 500 countries, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, actually like 700 performances in those regions and countries across the world. Mm -hmm. This is not just, now they're not just for domestic audience, but they're also for international audience. They're outgo, they're international festival going and also uh, catering to the need. Uh, as, a, as also I, uh, uh, during my conversation um, with the troop leader, and they were talking about kind of making bespoke sort of uh, tailor-made performances for audiences. The deputy director I spoke with talked about this, that it is very difficult to stay competitive, to stay mm -hmm. relevant, to try to appeal to modern audiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about this as a cultural icon from the 70s and 80s. Does it still hold that significance today and with today's audiences? I mean, it's a great question because it really sheds slides on the China reform as a whole. Uh, this particular Shenyang uh, Acrobat Troop is the first batch of uh, public institution mm -hmm. to reform uh, for the cultural industry in China. They all have to uh, change into state-owned firms, meaning that they have to make their own profits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so this uh, seems uh, so. This seems quite reasonable in some way because uh, in the, co the economic structure of performance, expert live performance, is a winner's take all market with very minimal ex uh, you know, marginal cost. But the, you know, if you're really good, you're crown jewel, then you will have a large market. So after this reform, some uh, poor, the less performing, uh, well, these this kind of troops uh, went bankrupt immediately. Some uh, are struggling to survive and some makes money. And Shenyang is the, the group that makes money. Mm. And why is that? Because uh, they, they, are, they are really good. They, they have high demand outside. Uh, and, and from the rest of the world. The rest of the world yeah. is the, the face of our country. Mm. But uh, can we do better? I think yes. Uh, yeah. Because there are some, uh, our reform has not been completed yet. Or sometimes we could even go to the wrong direction for a particular industry, such as perhaps this one. Because the, uh, the underlying economic structure for training an acrobat is very different from others. So if you need to uh, train the kid from childhood, 
But then the recent labor law implemented allows the uh, the youngsters to leave with just thirty day with just a thirty day notice. Even mm -hmm. in a free economy like Hong Kong, uh, in, in the movie industry, for example, there are some kind of uh, unusual contract terms that allow the, the contractor to have some sort of a longer relationship uh, restraint for the performance because it needs a, a very high upfront investment cost. So that perhaps we need some sort of flexibility for, for this one. And also, uh, perhaps we need to uh, allow better uh, uh, to uh, incentivize the, the owners in here, owners and also workers in here. The brand name is very good, yeah. but then uh, they, they have to simultaneously satisfy the market profit making criteria yeah. and also some of the requirement from the government is to make yeah. them very hard. If they could use a brand name and merge a uh, joint operation with a private company, that mm. will make their life much, much easier. So it's like, it's really cool to watch, but then there's definitely a lot of things going on behind the management, I think. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, Professor Tong and I pick up on that here. Yes. I mean, when you watch them perform and you see how this operates, and this can be applied to, I think, a lot of acrobatic troops across China, um, you know, how, how difficult is it to try to stay competitive and to hopefully, maybe, turn profitable? Well, as far as I know, once again, I mean, this troop now being turned into, kind of converted into a performing, performing arts uh, group cooperation they now uh, try to diversify their portfolio mm -hmm. by actually setting up a school of themselves. Mm -hmm. So they start training young kind of acro acrobatic students mm -hmm. from a very young age. And so that guaranteed the future success mm -hmm. of a very accomplished acrobatic artist. Mm -hmm. And so in this sense, they remain competitive. They remain competitive because they always have the, the best of the bright, the best, the best of the, mm -hmm. the best mm -hmm. in terms of their skills, in terms of their, uh, for example, perform performances, and also the length of their career uh, in terms of staying with this very troop. Secondly, once again, I think that this very marketization would provide further stimulus for them to remain strong, because to run a troop like this, you need uh, funding, you need grant, you need money investment, and the government stopped providing all the money to all the investment, and so you need to approach uh, various sorts of uh, source of funding, like private investment, private investment like this. Um, and, there, and, there is, and there is also a value to government funding because you see this all over the world where there's a value in the culture and the arts organizations and sometimes whether it's opera mm. performances in the US yeah. or acrobatic yeah. troops in China, right. it's, it's a value to the culture and society to have these things going. It's been a fascinating yeah. day here. We're not done. We have more shows to do. Yeah, definitely, yeah. With this acrobatic troupe. We saw the kids earlier today with me. I played around with them. We'll hopefully do that a little bit later on today. Oh, we will, actually, yeah. And so make sure you tune in to CGTN Television Network. We're going to be on Global Business and China 24 later today. Check the listings for that. And, of course, at this time tomorrow, we'll be back with a new exciting story from unknown location. Let's give it a secret. Let's give it a secret for now, yeah. So that does it for us. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it here on CGTN. Yeah, thanks for watching. In 70 years, China has undergone unprecedented transformation. From its old industrial base in the Northeast, to its new manufacturing powerhouse in the Southeast, and to its emerging Southwest, CGTN offers you a panoramic view of contemporary China. Our crews will travel along three different routes and come to you live from dozens of locations and free mobile studios. Join us for an all-inclusive look at China on our TV channel and digital platforms, September the 9th to the 20th. It is new China, then and now, in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China, only on CGTN.